Okay. So I just recall you some definition that we introduced yesterday. So we, we give the definition of simple function. So you have that f, you have f from i e to r is a simple function if it is measurable. and takes only fi a finite number of values, OK? And takes only a finite number of values. OK, then uh, after this, we saw that a particular uh, simple function that we will uh, consider are the step function which are step function is a simple function with the following representation so you have f of x is equal to this finite sum is a, uh, a linear combination of characteristic function, uh, yes, of a characteristic function of, of intervals, okay? A, A, I are intervals. So today we will be uh, interested in approximating uh, a measurable function by mean of, uh, of, uh, of step function. And then we would like also to approximate, uh, as a second step, measurable function by means of continuous function, OK? So I just recall you uh, the statement of the theorem. So you have f. We start by f defined in a closed interval measurable and we add this hypothesis and we assume a kind of boundedness and assume that um, the measure that f takes the values uh, plus or minus infinity only on a set of measure zero. OK, then we want to show that for any epsilon there exists, uh, we can find a step function um, h I mean, just in the statement, I stress the dependence of h about, um, upon epsilon. Then I will, I will drop this uh, notation. Uh, of course, from a, b to r, step function, which is close to our given measurable function in this, uh, in this way. So you have that the measure of the set where h epsilon minus um, f are larger than epsilon is less than epsilon, less or equal if you want. And we can also find, for any epsilon, we can also find there exists a continuous function g epsilon from a, b to r. So this is a step function. We can, we can do more, so we can approximate them a measurable function with somehow a, a very smooth function, uh, at least continuous function. Uh, and we have the same, the same kind of, uh, of, of closeness, closeness. So you have g epsilon minus f larger than epsilon is less or equal than epsilon. OK. OK. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think yes. Maybe yesterday I put it in that way. I think yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, now, uh, so we will proceed somehow um, by step and we, we first will provide a first rough approximation of F by means of bounded function, okay? Then we will somehow um, do better and better step by step. So we consider the following A decreasing sequence of set BM uh, defined this way. So you have the set of the X in AB such that F of X is larger or equal than M. And okay, take m for instance uh, uh, to be uh, an integer. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, we are within uh, an interval, so we have that in particular uh, the first of this set b one is uh, the measure of the first of this set is uh, is less or equal than b minus a, and moreover, so is. Uh, it's finite, and moreover, here we have that, as I told you, this is, of course, a decreasing sequence of set. As by a previous result, we can say something about the limit of the measure of this set because we are under the, the good hypothesis, okay? So what we have, we have that, the limit as m goes to plus infinity of the measure of this bm is equal to the measure of the, the countable intersection. Okay, we, we proved this uh, some, some lectures ago. Okay, but, so what can we say about this set here? Okay, we, we try to understand how it looks like Okay, you can see it uh, as the intersection, this countable intersection. Okay, by definition is this, uh, which is, which is precisely the set where uh, the modulus of f is, uh, is is equal to plus infinity. Okay, but. By hypothesis, we know that f takes values plus or minus infinity only on a set of measure zero. Okay, so what we know is that the measure of this measure, okay, is zero because of this. Because of this and plus the hypothesis that we, that we made, okay? By hypothesis, we know that the measure of this intersection is... Uh, is zero. Okay. Okay, so how can we rephrase this uh, this fact? Okay. Okay, of course, we just by the definition of limit, we have that for any epsilon that exists uh, an M the depending on epsilon, of course, such that the measure of, um, of, of the set where f of x is larger or equal than m epsilon is, 
is less than epsilon. Okay. Okay, now we define um, by means of, of this set um, a bounded function, so a bounded a measurable function, so let uh, uh, let be so let we define fm as the product between f and the characteristic function of uh, um, of uh, this set here, so somehow uh, the complement of that, the characteristic function of the set where the modulus of f of, f of x is less or equal than m, okay? Okay, this is a measurable set, so this is a measurable function, this is measurable by mm, hypothesis, so this is a, a measurable and uh, and bounded function, okay? Because this uh, this is a cutoff, basically. It's measurable and bounded bounded function. Okay. 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 Now, if you what I want to use now is uh, um, a result that uh, I state, yes, sir. Uh, hmm? No, no, it's the product. Yeah, I was saying that I want to use a result that I, uh, that I proved yesterday, th that you can approximate a bounded function by means of a sequence of step function, if you remember. And the convergence is, uh, is uniform if you start by a bounded and measurable function. If, if you check in your notes, you can find. Okay, <clears throat> so we know that, so this would be the, the function that I want to, to approximate, okay? So we can find, by, a, okay, we can find, so I write you by a previous remark, I don't know how I call it yesterday, I think it was a remark. Okay, so we can find a sequence of, uh, uh, of simple function uh, that call them phi n, okay, which converge uh, to to this Fm uniformly, okay? This we proved yesterday. Okay, so just to, to fix the idea, let, let n, the integer n, be such that you have that phi n of x minus fm of x is less than epsilon over 2. Okay, for any, of course, for any x e. A, B. Okay, again, by a previous lemma, it was the, the last uh, thing that we proved yesterday. We have that. We can split. We can somehow estimate the measure of what? Of our starting function f minus phi of n. The set where this is... Uh, this gap is uh, larger than epsilon in this way, less or equal than the measure of f minus phi m, larger or equal than epsilon over 2, plus the measure of phi f, uh, no, sorry, um, uh, 
fm minus no i did this is sorry make a mistake fm minus phi n larger or equal than epsilon epsilon over 2 hmm? Uh, F minus F capital M, F capital M, so you got the subtract, minus phi N, okay? Okay. Okay, then, okay, we can observe that F minus F M larger than epsilon over 2 is contained in the set where for large m, f is different from fm, which is equal to the set where f is larger than m. And phi n minus fm is larger than epsilon over 2. is equal to the empty set because of this. Okay, so again, we can continue this, uh, this estimate, <sighs> saying that this is less or equal than epsilon. Uh, I use this fact here also, okay? Okay. Okay, now we know that um, we have that now we we focus on phi n. So this is a step function and we know that we can represent it in this way, so This is, yeah, because this, here there are three blackboard. <laughs> you can just, okay. This is less than this. Okay, okay. Phi, phi n is a step function, okay, a simple function. Okay, from now on, let me drop this index because otherwise it becomes too, the notation are too heavy. So we can represent, we can represent phi as phi of x as the finite sum of a i key. E i with, uh, of course, we still have a i less than m, okay, and e i are paired with disjoint. Disjoint uh, uh, measurable set. Okay, and now comes the theorem of um, characterization by approximation that we prove, okay? And so we, we saw that by the theorem of characterization by approximation measurable set so we uh, we have that since we are under somehow um, under the hypothesis that the measure of EI are finite so you, if you remember we had at some point an additional hypothesis in that theorem okay we have that being the measure of EI finite 
what we prove? We have that. We proved something about the symmetric difference of this set and the union of disjoint open intervals, if you remember. Okay, what we prove is that, that we have we have that for any fixed I uh, there exists a finite a finite union of intervals of uh, they were also okay also open open interval uh, call this union ui such that the measure of the symmetric difference between ei and this union is small, okay, is less than, for instance, epsilon is arbitrarily small. So you can think that it's, it's less than epsilon over m. <sighs> okay. Okay, m was the, the index here at the top, okay. Okay, so how we, we can define, let us define, define h, this step function h has the sum as i goes to, uh, from 1 to m of a i characteristic times the characteristic function of this union u i, and uh, we have that. Okay, H is different from phi. The set where H is different from phi is contained in the union from I, which goes from 1 to M of EI symmetric difference of UI. So basically, you have that. This leads to the fact that the measure of this set is less or equal than the measure of this union, okay, i from 1 to m, ei symmetric difference ui, which is less or equal than the sum m of epsilon divided by m, which gives you epsilon, okay? Okay, then we have, we use again uh, the lemma, the last lemma of yesterday. previous lemma okay we want to to estimate the measure of f minus h larger or equal of 2 epsilon this is less or equal than the measure of f minus phi larger or equal than epsilon plus the measure of h divide n different from phi which is less or equal than two epsilons. Okay, so we prove 
the existence of the set of, of the step function okay now I just want to step function to stress that um, so we have this step function h but we can always um, define so represent h instead of uh, uh, as the linear combination of the characteristic function of this union of open intervals we can we know that any these unions can be uh, also um, can be represented as the union of uh, the finite union of disjoint open intervals okay so in turn you can see h as uh, h you can represent h of x as the sum for j which goes from 1 to l for instance of a j of key i j where i j are, are um, open intervals at this joint open intervals okay so in general l will be greater than m of course okay now we have to provide a continuous function okay Okay, so we want to construct this continuous function. First of all, we start by observing a okay, very easy fact that we can approximate a characteristic function of this type. Um, maybe with the drawing it's easy to understand, so we can approximate a characteristic function of the type uh, know, CD of the interval CD with a continuous function so take maybe this open because then here we have open by a continuous function that I will call psi delta uh, okay, x, c, d, so it depends on many things, uh, so that they differ, these two functions, at most on a set of measure to delta. So, can you see how how you can you can construct? I mean, it's 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 very easy. Eh? So you have C. Maybe you can also get rid of this. You have C. You have D. You have a characteristic function here, the level one. This is the level one. And you want to approximate this with this function. Okay. I mean, you, you, for instance, you can argue in that way. You can put, okay, here I put, we have aj, which are um, of course, okay, le le let me use this. So you have C, D, and then here you have C, put a point C plus uh, epsilon or delta C plus delta over 2, probably. And C, oh, so you have 
C plus. Oh, it's too small. So basically, what we want to do, I mean, you have this interval ij, which have the form ij bj, OK? So what we want to do, we have that we have this characteristic function of this interval. And then we want to approximate it, uh, this characteristic function, which is here, by a function like this, OK, which is continuous, OK? So if you, if you take this, uh, this set small, they differ only on, on a small set, OK? So here you can, for our purpose, you take aj plus epsilon divided 8 over l. And here you take, you take bj minus uh, epsilon divided by 8 over l. And then this would be the point bj minus epsilon 4 over l. And here in analogy, you have this would be the point aj plus epsilon divided by 4 over l, OK? OK, then you can approximate the step function by means of a linear combination of, of this function uh, like this, OK? This function like this. OK, so you have that the measure of the set x in AB, where gj is different from key. Uh, these are the function gj, OK? aj, bj is equal to 2 times epsilon divided by 4 divided by L. So at the end, you get uh, epsilon divided by 2L, OK? OK, so the, the, now the idea, of course, is to, uh, is to um, the natural candidate is for a continuous function is a G defined as a linear combination of from j which goes from 1 to l of a j g j of x okay this is continuous this is continuous and it has also compact support and we have that the measure of the set where the gap between f and g are larger or equal than epsilon can be estimated in this way, is less or equal. <coughs> but we use always the, the same argument, okay? F minus H larger or equal than epsilon over 2, oh, plus the measure where H is different from G. Okay, this is less or equal than epsilon over 2 plus the sum for j, which goes from 1 to l, of the measure of key ij is different from gj, which is less or equal than epsilon over 2. So you combine everything. This is less or equal than epsilon, OK? And so this concludes. OK, so this concludes the proof. Maybe I think that in, in the following we will see but I mean, that we can do 
even better. I, I mean, if you if you smooth out this this part, you can you can obtain also a better approximation. Okay, you obtain approximation of a very smooth function. Okay, but I mean, we will see. We will see later on. <laughs> Uh, here, uh, but no, but, but just, just to say that this is, ep uh, is epsilon over this 2 is plus epsilon over 2. Okay, but uh, no, 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 it's just to say that, okay, if you want uh, to, be, to be more precise, uh, uh, so it was epsilon, uh, sorry, epsilon over 2. Uh, plus epsilon over two because you know so you end up with epsilon. Okay, but epsilon is arbitrarily small, so it's not a big, it's not a big difference. Okay, okay, can. Okay. Okay now. Okay, in two lemma, I mean, with one lemma and one theorem, we will see that uh, mm, we will see that mm, the convergence uh, almost everywhere to, to I mean among of course measurable functions uh, is all is a, is almost a, conver a uniform convergence outside set. Uh, of, um, of arbitrary small measure, okay? This is, I mean, the, the final result is the, is the theorem of Egor of Severini, which tells you that basically you can, apart from set which has very, you, which, has, which have uh, small measure, you can think at the uniform, at the, um, of the point-wise convergence has a, at, uh, um, a uniform convergence, okay? So the lemma, Okay, we will prove this by step. Okay, the first lemma is the following. Let E uh, okay, be uh, a measurable set of a finite measure. Okay, and then you consider Fn a sequence of measurable function, okay, of measurable function uh, of course defined uh, defined uh, on uh, on a on e on e. Okay, then let f be a measurable real valued function Okay, it's enough almost everywhere in E It can achieve also plus or minus infinity, but just on a set of measure zero. Okay. 
ok, such that fn converts to f almost everywhere in E, ok? So we have a kind of pointwise convergence almost everywhere. Ok, then, given any two arbitrary small quantity, so given epsilon positive and delta positive, we prove that there exists a set A uh, measurable, so A in E, A <coughs> measurable, and, okay, with the measure of A less than delta, and an integer n, which will depend on epsilon, on both epsilon and delta, such that for any x which, which does not belongs to A, so we are outside somehow a set of a small measure, Okay, and for any, for any n larger or equal than n, we have that fn of x minus f of x is less than epsilon. Okay, on proof. Okay, so we start by we fix an epsilon positive and we introduce this set Gn has the set of point in x, uh, point x in E such that the difference, the gap between fn of x and f of x is larger or equal than epsilon. And then, by means of this Gn, we define other set Fn as the union, the countable union for i, which goes from n to uh, infinity of this Gn. Okay, we, we can immediately uh, infer that uh, Fn is, sorry, Fn plus 1 is contained in Fn by construction for any n in n. And, okay, uh, we have that uh, F1 Yeah, GI. Thank you. Yeah, sure. F1 has finite measure because of our hypothesis, because it is contained in E. So F1 has finite measure. Okay, for now we observe this. Okay, now we observe that think let x be a point in E where f of x is, is finite and such that we have that the limit of f of n of x is equal to f of x. So we have convergence almost everywhere. So this is true almost everywhere, okay? Okay, this means we can uh, rephrase this that in the following way. This means that there exists, there exists an n, an integer n in n such that for any n larger or equal than n, fn of x 
minus f of x is less than epsilon or equivalently if you if you equivalently we have that x does not belong to fn for any n okay Okay, now just let me draw this following. So we notice also the following fact. Okay, since Fn converts to S almost everywhere by hypothesis, and S is finite, means that the intersection of this Fn is contained in the set of measure zero where the convergence does not take place. Ooh, does not take place. And hence, we have that the measure of the intersection of Fn is equal to zero. Okay. Okay, now we use a previous result about uh, the limit of the measure of the of, uh, of decreasing sequence of set. So we'll so Yeah, in the measure okay. zero. Well, sorry? The set. Yeah, no, is it unique? I mean, it's a set is unique, yeah. I mean, convergence means that the convergence, it converts almost, it converts everywhere uh, outside of a set of. Uh, I mean, everywhere in E outside of a set of measure zero. It's the definition that we introduced before, I mean, yesterday, you remember? So it, it means that there exists a, a set, uh, I mean, um, a set of measure zero such that it converts everywhere in E minus this set, okay? Okay, so you use previous result about the limit of uh, decreasing sequence of sets. Uh, okay, so we have that the limit of the measure of Fn, so we are under the, the good hypothesis, is equal to the measure of the intersection of this countable intersection. Okay, and we saw that is equal to zero. Okay, now we just use the definition of limit. So then, by definition of limit, of limit, by definition of limit, we have that what? We have that for any delta positive, no? There exists an integer n such that the measure of fn minus delta, the measure of fn is, is less than delta, 
Okay, and then if we define as A uh, the set in the statement no, of the theorem as Fn, for instance, then we get we get the, the thesis because we have that um, A is what? A is a set of the X in E such that there exists a K larger than N such that Fk of X minus f of x is larger or equal than epsilon and then we have we have that for any x in e minus a and for any n larger or equal than n fn of x minus f of x is less than epsilon okay and so we are done So basically, uh, the dependence upon delta and epsilon are mixed up in, in N, okay? N depends on delta and epsilon. Okay. And now we use this theorem to prove another fact, which, is, uh, which goes under the name of, uh, is known as Egorov-Severini. <clears throat> May I erase? No. no. Okay. Okay. Okay, so again we start with Fn Fn is a, a, a here it's uh, Severini. It's an Italian mathematician. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it's a sequence. function uh, which converts oh, uh, to a real <coughs> valued <coughs> measurable function almost everywhere on a measurable set set E of finite measure, okay? Okay, then for any small arbitrary small number eta. Okay, there exists a subset A, A of E, such that the measure of A is, is small. You can find some A with measure less than eta. Okay, such that Fn, this sequence, converts to F uniformly on 
on the set E minus. Okay, so basically you have uniform convergence outside set of very small measure. Okay. Okay, so the idea is to, of course, is to apply uh, the previous lemma, okay? Okay, so we apply with, uh, with special choices of epsilon and delta, okay? We apply the previous lemma with, for instance, you can take epsilon equal to 1 over m and delta take delta equal to eta times 2 minus to the minus m okay so we know can infer that there exists a measurable set A this is this is from the previous lemma which uh, in principle we depends on eta and m uh, such that the measure of A eta m is less than, than delta, no? So then eta times to the minus m. And moreover, again, for the previous lemma, there exists an integer, an integer n, which again will depend on eta and m, such that Okay, for any k larger than n, fk minus f is less than 1 over m on e minus this kind of set, okay? Okay, here we want to get rid of the dependence of m and we do this, so we define a set A eta as the union over M, so the countable union of this set A eta M. Okay. Okay, the first thing to do is to, to estimate the measure of this new set. Okay, so you have that the measure of A n, you just use the countable subadditive property, so you have that this is less or equal than n, so, sorry, m one infinity of the measure of each, uh, each set, which is equal to the sum for m, which is goes from one to infinity of eta times to n the minus m which is precisely eta okay and moreover what about the convergence moreover we have that okay we have that for any m there exists n such that for any k larger or equal than n you have that fk of x minus f of x is less or equal than 1 over m on e minus a. So you have that, basically this means that the limit of uh, this norm, the norm that leads you to the uniform convergence as k goes to plus infinity over x 
or belonging to E minus A of f of x, fk, sorry, fk of x minus f of x is equal to 0. And so this concludes the proof. So fn converts uniformly to f. OK. Hmm. So now I just want to, to ask you one thing. So we prove this under the hypothesis that the domain, so the set E, so which is the domain of definition of this uh, of all these function, is is finite. Okay. So what about if you have, for instance, um, a domain which is not bounded? Do you think that the theorem is still true or? You can provide a counterexample. Now, my, my question is that I proved this the, the, the lemma and this theorem under the hypothesis of, uh, of the boundedness of, uh, of E, so of the domain of definition. So, do you think that we can remove this uh, hypothesis and of still obtain this kind of uh, result, or re it is really needed? Or you can provide a counterexample for which, for instance, you can find function defined in the real line, which converts pointwise to another function. But you can, you, you can never have uniform convergence outside set of small measure. <laughs> of course, otherwise I wouldn't ask. <laughs> OK, think of at a very. I mean, when you uh, somehow, when you are in the real line, you are allowed to move with a set of type n, n plus 1, a characteristic function of set n, n plus 1. Okay, this is, sorry. Uh, okay, this was a, yeah. this was the measure. Okay. So, counterexample. So, the fact that measure of E was finite is necessary. Okay? Okay, why? Because take E, for instance, the, the whole um, real line, okay? So, of course, the measure is plus infinity, and you find fn of x has the characteristic function of, uh, of this interval, okay? Okay, you can see that fn of x converts to f, converts to, to 0, okay, to, to 0. Uh, almost ev everywhere, actually, everywhere on um, on R, okay. Because no matter how you fix X, at some point you have s we, you will find some hand which go will uh, you know, step out. X. So it's something. And but what about so what about the measure? of this set fn minus 0 is equal to 1 is what? Is the measure of n. So this measure is, is fixed, is equal to 1. So you cannot make this arbitrary small, okay? So here we can, we do not, we do not have uniform convergence outside the set set of arbitrary small arbitrary small measure okay okay so this hypothesis it's needed okay Now we will 
prove another theorem which is goes under the name of losing theorem uh, which tells you that a measurable function is almost a continuous function okay uh, goes under the name of losing Okay, losing. So writing capital letter is. Okay, so let F be a measurable um, okay, real valid real valued function. An interval uh, a b okay then given some delta positive There is a continuous function continuous function um, how we call it phi on a b okay such that the measure where f is different from phi is less than delta. So this is um, the way I mean almost uh, that a measurable function is almost a continuous function. So we start by using the first thing that we proved today. So we saw today okay, that for any epsilon, we can find, we can construct a continuous function, g epsilon, okay, which okay, is continuous or belongs to the space of continuous function over an interval. Uh, such that you have that the measure where f of x minus g epsilon of x is not equal to an epsilon is less than epsilon. And then, okay, now we want to, to fix this epsilon somehow to discretize. So let's fix to be equal to uh, 2 to the minus n and so let g n the corresponding uh, g okay and let g n equal so the corresponding continuous function okay then we define a sequence of set a n in this way the x in i such that f of x minus g n of x are larger than 2 to the minus n. Okay, we know that the measure of this set a n is less than 2 to the minus n. And moreover, uh, okay, moreover, this also means that fn of x minus gn of x, uh, no fn, sorry, f of x minus gn of x is less to the 2 to the minus n for any x 
outside a n, okay, and i minus a n. Okay, now we consider the union of this a n. So we consider, we define as b k the union for n which goes from k to plus infinity of um, a n. And we call and we define as B infinity what? The intersection of this BK over K. Eh? Uh, no, B, BK, yeah, BK is the union uh, for N, which goes from K, okay. Yeah, usually I, I use the other notation, okay. Now I consider the intersection, this countable intersection. I define this set B infinity. Okay, so by construction we have that BK plus 1 is containing the BK and uh, the measure of B1, okay, is finite. And so again, we use the, 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 the a formal result, and then you have that the measure of this intersection, which I call B infinity, is equal to the limit of the measure of BK as k goes to plus infinity. Okay, so what about this measure? The measure of this bk is less or equal than the sum n less or equal than n, which goes from k to plus infinity to k minus 1, which goes to 0, as k tends to plus infinity. So basically, from this, we deduce that the measure of b infinity is 0. Okay, so... You can prove that for any x that does not belong to B infinity, you have that Gn of x converts to f of x. Okay. So basically what we have is that Gn converts to f almost everywhere. Okay. So what we found? We found a sequence of measurable function which converts pointwise almost everywhere to a measurable function f. So we are under it, the hypothesis of the theorem of Egor of Severini, okay? So uh, we uh, are somehow under the hypothesis of of Egor of Severini theorem. Okay, so what can we say? We can say that for any epsilon positive, there exists a measurable set G epsilon, for instance, G epsilon uh, measurable. Uh, such that this measure is small, is less than epsilon, okay, and such that Gn converts to F uniformly on I minus G epsilon.
So at this, this stage, how would you proceed? So you, you have, these are continuous function, okay, Gn. You have uniform convergence, this is a uniform limit. So what would be the natural candidate to be would be, for instance, the uniform limit of Gn on I minus J epsilon. But, but what is the trick here? Is the point is that you can deduce that the uniform limit of continuous function is continuous if you are over a compact set, on a closed set. So you are not sure that this is a closed set, okay? So we have to argue a, bit of, a little bit more, okay? Okay, so this is not, we don't know nothing about this, but we, we did a lot about how do you can approximate measurable set by mean of open, closed, uh, Borel set, and so on, okay? Okay, so we know that we can find can find an open set uh, O epsilon, so it's open, okay, such that what O epsilon um, contains G epsilon, and such that the measure of O epsilon is less than the measure of G epsilon plus epsilon, which is less than 2. So you put less than two epsilon. Okay, so basically you have that E i, the interval i minus O epsilon is contained in i minus G epsilon, of course. And this is indeed a closed set, okay? Closed set. Okay, in the, in the, in the relative topology of, of i. Okay, now we need to use so we want a, a continuous function but which is defined on all i, okay? We are not, it's not enough on i minus o epsilon. So to extend uh, this continuous function on, uh, on all i, so to extend the uniform limit of gn over this closed set, which we know that is continued, to a continuous function over all i, we use the Tietze extension theorem. So we recall the uh, extension. Okay. Well, so what does it say? So it's in a, it's a, in a quite general framework. Okay, as I did. So let X be a matrix space. And uh, and let Y be uh, a closed subset of X. And then, if we have G, a function defined on Y, with values in R, continues, and bounded then there exists an extension there exists a G defined from X to R which is still continuous and it coincides with the small g over y. 
and we have that G. So the, restric the restriction of G on Y is equal to this small G. Okay, we want just to apply this theorem. Okay, so we can infer that there exists um, okay, there exists some capital F which belongs to which is continuous on the whole interval in, in the whole metric space C0i, which of course plays the role of uh, x, uh, such that f restricted to the, to the set i minus o epsilon is equal to f restricted to i minus o epsilon. And we also saw that, and we and we, we proved this we, we, by construction, actually, that the measure of O epsilon is less than 2 epsilon. So, but in any case, it's, it's arbitrarily small, OK? OK, so you can conclude the proof. So, I mean, uh, um, C0i plays the role of x. C0 i minus o epsilon plays the role of y, OK? Uh, it's bounded because it's continuous uh, on, a, on a compact. And OK, and then, then we are done, OK? OK, so for today, I think I will stop here. Just let me, um, maybe we will discuss more in detail tomorrow, but just a little bit of warning. Uh, warning. Maybe you can think about it. This losing theorem, the losing theorem, okay, does not mean that. that any x in i minus o epsilon is a point of continuity for f So you cannot infer any property of this kind from this. The fact that they coincide, that a measurable function coincide with a continuous function um, outside a set of small measure, this doesn't mean nothing about uh, uh, the fact that f is continuous or not. Maybe you can think about a counterexample about it. About this, for instance, take. Okay, think about it. In any case, I will, we will discuss uh, on Thursday, okay?